Today is the anniversary of an event ingrained in many Badgers fans' minds, the Camp Randall Stampede. New tonight, we hear from another Badger player who helped pull victims from underneath the piles of people. Now, from today's TMJ4, this is Wisconsin Tonight. Here's Carol Meekins and Mike Jacobs. Thanks for joining us on Wisconsin Tonight. It was 20 years ago today that dozens of people were injured in a stampede at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. Badger fans celebrating a huge victory when suddenly things went terribly wrong. And the events of that day changed lives and changed the way stadium security is set up. Jesse Garcia takes a look back on that fateful day. The images are horrifying. I, I thought we were going to die. Amay Jansen was a 19 year old sophomore from Anago, Wisconsin. She and a group of friends were in the sixth row. The Badgers beat Michigan for the first time in 12 years, and a party unfolded on the field. Then everything happened quickly. Fans rushed to join the celebration. There was this feeling, the surge, and all at once I was picked up and I got pushed to the left. My roommates got pushed to the right. And, and by then it was just like somebody was just closing in on my lungs. It, it, everybody started screaming. Panic set in. Many in the stadium were still clueless. The band played on. Brookfield native Joe Panos was one of a handful of football players who suddenly realized that things were out of control. I just saw a look of panic on some of their faces and then, you know, I saw other people screaming, there's people underneath me. That's when I realized, that's when I knew that this is bad, really, really bad. I was up against a fence and there were bodies around me and people screaming. And I do remember the announcer saying, please get off the field. It got to the point where I could I could barely take a breath. I re do remember that little gasp. Holy God, you know, help these people. I remember some some football players saying they can't breathe, they can't breathe. I just started hauling, uh, yanking people out. One of them pulled me over, and my arm got caught. Um, so they they pulled my arm and got me out and I remember turning around and kind of grabbing a jersey and I saw the number three. That was a wide receiver named Mike Brin. And I remember getting her over the fence and walking her a couple feet up the tunnel and saying, go, leave, you're okay, get out of here. Nearby, Panos pulled three or four people from the bottom of the pile. They were called PNBs, pulseless non-breathers. Eyes rolled over, they were blue, um, urinated on themselves, uh, vomit coming down her, um, uh, out of their mouth, blood out of their nose. Yeah, I thought they were dead. And within a few minutes, I, I could sense something was wrong. Now I got players coming in the locker room. They're crying. I can remember vividly seeing Joe Rudolph and a couple. They, they were kind of disoriented. It, it was scary. It was very emotional. Amay walked in a daze to her dorm and then to find her friend who was resuscitated on the field. The hospital was out of control as well. There were students everywhere. It was a sea of red. Yeah, I went to the hospital two days later and I visited the girls and, that were there and you know it was kind of freaky because you know they're all bandaged up and their eyes you, their eyes were red like like blood red. I mean there's no white in their eyes at all because you get asphyxiated and that's what happens. You're, you know you know, capillaries breaking. Your eyes look like you know like demon eyes. Despite feeling some post-traumatic stress, Amay went to the Rose Bowl later that season. She and Mike Brin, along with another student he saved, were also featured in People magazine. We will forever be linked somehow, some way. And, you know, if I, I run into her in the streets in 30 years, we will always be friends. This is what the field looked like the day after the stampede. And this is what it looks like today. As you can see, those fences have been taken down. And while they do still have barricades in front of the student section, there are clear exit areas. I know we moved the students. We put them in the end zone now. Uh, we made some changes as far as exits, made some changes as far as the fencing. 20 years later, Amay lives in Peoria, Illinois, married, a mother of three, and a lawyer. She keeps a scrapbook from the stampede and admits the after effects linger to this day. I think it will always be there, somewhat. I get a little leery at concerts, crowds, things like that. I always know where the exit is. <laughs> 
Joe Panos is an NFL agent and a volunteer assistant coach at Arrowhead High School. A few years ago, a man approached him out of the blue and said, He pulled my sister out. That was pretty cool. Mike Brin is now Dr. Michael Brin, medical director of the emergency department at Columbia St. Mary's Ozaki. He knew from an early age he might become a doctor, but the events of that day helped solidify that in terms of it's inside of me. You know, that is something that I want to do to help people. More than 70 were injured, not one died. A fact that makes the whole thing easier to deal with. They survived, so, and they're, I'm, they're doing well too, so. I don't think about much. It's nothing to think about. They're, they're, you know, if they would have passed, it would, it would have haunted me for a long time. It certainly, you know, brings some tears to my eyes, but then they're quickly removed by the fact that I know that everybody was okay. And in the end, the end effect was that we all came together as a community, as a team, as a family, and more good came out of it than anything else. Come, mustard. Ame knows how close she came to tragedy. She never takes life for granted and feels extra emotion welling up when she looks at her girls. It so does. I mean, when you meet them and see how great they are, <laughs> um, it does. Appreciate it. Everybody was lucky that day, uh, and because of that, we, you know, we got we got lucky that we were able to end up with her. Oldest daughter Grace sums it up best when she says this to her mother. I love you. The players from that 1993 Rose Bowl team will be honored at the Badgers' last home game this year. Mike and Carol, you know, we don't get enough happy endings to stories. This yeah, one has well, a happy ending. It's amazing uh, that people weren't killed in that massive humanity all just coming down, crushing people up against the fences. It's absolutely baffling. I mean, to think that there were mm. over 70 injured, I think about seven that were critically injured, had to be resuscitated, mm. and that nobody perished. And it's really thanks to those football players and the paramedics who were there quickly and other, pl other students who helped out as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, it has a happy ending. Yeah. Hooray. And I remember on that day, we were just certain, looking at that horrible oh, video yeah. and watching it, we just knew someone had died in this, and we turned out to be very lucky. And, and one Absolutely. of the positives, I think, it, it, maybe it was an unintended design flaw in, mm -hmm. the, in the security. Obviously, that's changed at Camp Randall. Mm -hmm. I would have to think that other athletic facilities around the country have saw what happened that day and made their own changes. I think you're absolutely right. Nobody's going to put a fence there that mm -hmm. doesn't have yeah. any sort of exit to it where nobody can get through. Oh, a happy very, ending. Yeah, very touching. A nice story, story. Oh, as always, Excellent. Jess. Thank, thank you, thank Jess. You.